let's talk about forces. So in this video, we will introduce some basic idea of different forces, which you should probably have learned already in IGCSE. Uh, but then try to spend some time to take a look of the textbook here from uh, the first page I showed you until uh, friction. For friction, I would make another video um, to talk about the friction nature. So you may want to pause the video now and read uh, the other forces. A few moments later. Okay, so first of all, uh, you have to understand that the force is a vector in physics. Uh, the idea of vector is simply it has its direction. So that's why understanding the nature of the force itself, uh, where it will point to uh, how the magnitude will interact with other things, will be important for calculating the uh, motion like acceleration later on so one of the most common force that you find should be weight and uh, I'm sure all of you know as long as you are on a planet then the weight will be significant and uh, we can calculate the weight of an object by W equals to mg g will be the gravitational acceleration of the planet so for earth it will be 9.81 in fact uh, for IB later on in chapter 6 uh, we will learn more about um, gravitation so the basic idea of uh, gravitation no law and uh, what if the planet will be of a different radius uh, or a different mass and notice that this equation weight equals to mg only is applicable is valid when you are close to the surface of the planet so if you are saying uh, say this is the earth and you are somehow away from the ground then uh, the gravitational force would be actually weaker so uh, g will be different in that case but normally as long as you are on the surface like within say 1 km i think it's still very valid um, so you can use this formula directly uh, in fact, if you study more about uh, physics uh, in advanced level, uh, higher than IB, of course, then uh, you could also realize that the location would actually affect the um, gravitational acceleration. So it is not really 9.81. At certain point, it could be different. Uh, and that part of it could be uh, because of the rotational motion of the earth itself so if you're interested you may want to find more information or ask me the next thing is um, tension for the force and um, for the as long as you have a string and there are some other forces and given that the string does not break so as long as it's not breaking then uh, the tension should act in a way that try to uh, transfer the force that you have for example uh, if you have a block hang by a string then simply uh, if the block is not moving then you should know that t should equal to mg in that case and the tension would be always along the string or the wire uh, given that of course here given that uh, there's no elasticity in the string uh, there are some other physics like when I was in studying in ALFO there was a subject called apply maths and those string are uh, like consider would be elastic and that would make it so complicated in that case so in IB physics uh, all the tension or the string we consider has an assumption of uh, that they are inelastic at the same time if you have a string that is uh, somewhat tilt like like this like with a certain angle then of course the tension will go along the string so uh, the tension will be changed as well so this can only achieve apparently this situation can only achieve by if someone is probably adding an extra force here so that the whole system could be balanced if the block is apparently uh, at rest or maybe if there's no force then apparently the, the block will probably be moving to the right in that case uh, the other system also could lead to a, a uh, much more sophisticated physics concept is a pulley system and again in IB physics uh, we only learn about very simple pulley system uh, where if you try to google it then you can find there are lots of different kinds of uh, pulley systems some of them will help you to 
uh, use less force for example like this kind like you could use uh, say originally you only need uh, 100 Newton uh, but then now you only need uh, say uh, 20 Newton with a different combination or uh, yeah different combination but of course there will be drawback uh, of this so again if you're interested uh, feel free to uh, read more about it and I do think these are all very interested and the one last thing about uh, the nature of tension is simply that uh, if the string is lack, that means it's not like tightly pulled, you may say, then uh, the tension will simply be zero, right? Because uh, the difference between, uh, this is simply the nature of the tension, right? Different from uh, a spring, which we'll talk later on. So for the spring, uh, I don't know why the textbook doesn't really provide an image here, but say uh, there's a spring like this, this is called in like natural length, say this is uh, 3cm. And say somehow if there's a spring where you have uh, compressed it, so it will become shorter, then uh, there will be a force, restoring force that would be applied uh, by the spring onto whatever object is attached to. Or the other way could be, if you somehow extended the spring and uh, they will also want to restore it back uh, and this is a tension due to extension so in fact uh, for most of you you should have learned uh, the basic idea of this and you have learned uh, there's an equation that governs the idea of tension in the spring that is f equals to negative kx uh, where x is the extension k is the spring constant you should have learned it in IGCSE and we'll talk more about it in um, IB. The idea why there is a negative sign is because uh, the force is always opposite to the displacement that you have. So for example, you can see in the diagram that I draw here, apparently if you compare to the natural length, then somehow you have compressed by that amount and then the force will want to go back and that's why I just now said it is a restoring force because it always want to restore to the original length same when you try to extend try to pull the spring and the spring would want to since the displacement is going to the right and the force they behave uh, I think is quite common sense it will try to pull it to the left and so this is um, that's why there's a negative sign here it may be useful later on when you try to be more organized in the uh, calculation. So I personally prefer uh, having a negative or you have to work out the direction by yourself. The next thing is uh, called the normal reaction uh, or you can call it the, well it's kind of a contact force. There are so many different kinds of contact force including uh, later on we talk about friction. Friction is one kind of contact force. So for this one some people have a uh, different name for it. Some people may call it uh, simply normal force for simplicity. Some people may call it reaction force. And I would say personally I prefer to call it normal force. All right. The reason is that uh, if we talk about the very simplistic idea of normal force, you can look at the first idea here over here and uh, it is simply when you have a certain box on the ground uh, the boss given that is not moving and the ground is hard enough then uh, simply the normal force or the reaction force will be equal in magnitude of W um, when the boss is on the slant, slanted ground like this not actually ground like a platform like this then the force you can see is perpendicular to the surface of the ground. So that's why I like to use the word normal force more because the idea of normal in mathematics is 90 degrees. Right? We, we, we usually draw this kind of symbol in mathematics, right? 90 degrees. Uh, while when we use the word reaction force, um, it will cause you some more misconception. Later on, we will talk about Newton's third law. Okay, and for quite many of you, if you study IGCSE, you know uh, it is related to something called the action and reaction pair. 
okay and um, the saying is I don't want to talk too deep into it but then uh, the basic idea of this is saying uh, that for every force there's another force and then you in uh, equal magnitude but opposite direction and you call them as a pair and because of the name reaction force quite many people uh, I mean student of course um, thought the R, the normal force or the reaction force here is a pair of the weight and it, it is actually wrong so I'll leave it to you to think about and we'll explain, explain more later on uh, in the maybe two or three videos later when we talk about Newton's third law so I'll leave it to you but once again they are not a pair okay so uh, the other nature that you can think about is um, again it is always 90 degrees so like when you have a circle surface like this then you can think about there's a tangential line you can draw and you draw 90 degrees with it and if you talk about say a ladder here you could have two points of reaction force like one point here and another point here depending on the situation again uh, and ultimately uh, normal force it actually is kind of a reaction uh, from the ground so say if you have a box of certain weight and say the weight is 20 newton and so normally you may have a reaction force of 20 newton because apparently the box is not moving given that the situation is like this and the ground again is hard enough and so uh, this is simply the consequence so it's like a reaction from the ground if I change the situation that I I'm just trying to be playful so I try to add a certain force I try to push the box uh, downward with a certain force say 5 Newton and so of course uh, this force would not be able to break the box probably and also the ground is again hard enough to withstand uh, such a pressure and so the reaction force would then be different in that case would be 25 Newton in that case so probably that is why the, uh, the reason people call it uh, reaction force but then once again um, I hope you understand it is different from the action and reaction pair that we talk about in Newton's third law yeah and I think uh, here is a pretty nice diagram to understand uh, why there is a reaction force uh, if you really want to explain by more uh, mole molecular atomic level uh, so you can take a look of it the n last two things before we talk about fraction in the next video uh, is drag uh, and upfront so for drag actually there is an equation that we can refer to which is uh, not in the IBC talking about uh, aerodynamics which is drag, drag actually has the same name as uh, same meaning as air resistance so whenever I talk about drag or air resistance basically it's the same thing and you can imagine uh, the idea of having drag or air resistance is uh, you you have a certain object and say uh, the car and the motion is going to the right and imagine those are the air particle in the front so uh, of course air is everywhere and you since you're living on earth uh, you can't escape from the air itself and so when you are moving through the air or in fact uh, it happens to water as well so that's why people usually call it fluid all right uh, for both uh, gases and also the liquid and so whenever you go through those fluid then you are applying the momentum onto them so you're sharing like getting uh, the momentum away from yourself so you'll be slowed down in that case and so in order to uh, give a description on how the drag force would change then we can refer to the equation from NASA here which you can see is related to the velocity uh, more precisely is the air relative airflow so how fast you are moving relative to the air and also the other thing that is quite crucial would be the uh, reference area which means uh, the surface area that you are kind of colliding with the air uh, there are other factors also which would include density 
Apparently, density affects how many dots you have in the air. So how many air molecules, basically. So of course, uh, the more molecules that you have, then the drag force will be greater. Same as the area as well. And uh, lastly, is a coefficient of drag, which is something to do with the aerodynamics features of the shape. For example, the shape or the material that you use uh, for the objects that you are having. So uh, this is a more sophisticated equation that you won't get to use in IB, unfortunately. But then if you're interested, take a look of this. And some, quite some people uh, would like to use it for ED and IA. The last thing is called the upthrust. And in fact, I would usually not call it upthrust. Uh, I would, I think uh, the name uh, called the buoyancy force is a more uh, straightforward name that you won't mix, up, mix it up. Because quite some people uh, will mix up the idea of upthrust to thrust itself. Because uh, they are simply different. Thrust is more like a forward force uh, for the rocket. So upthrust here is more referring to the buoyancy force. And buoyancy force itself is uh, simply the force experienced by an object that is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. And that is closely re related to the Archimedes principle. So again, the equation here, uh, you may find uh, interesting. So you may want to take a look of it more. And uh, unfortunately, it won't be asked in IB. It's not in the syllabus. Uh, but again, it is uh, quite interesting to know more about the buoyancy. And it is very useful for uh, many different kinds of engineering design in the modern world nowadays, including, of course, all the uh, ship design uh, nowadays. Ferratesium got a very interesting mysterious questions that uh, I find very fascinating. So you may want to take a look of it, and that is related to the idea of certain type of force we just talked about in the video. So uh, find the link in the description below, and uh, they also have this uh, explanation after the video. So enjoy yourself, and if you have any question, feel free to ask me also.